For over 150 years, scientists from around the world have studied the intricate and complex details of human evolution. Many questions have been answered, and new problems have emerged as the journey to understand human evolution continues. Advances in technology have given us new and improved frameworks for unfolding the mysteries of human origins. Frameworks which allow us to understand human evolution as never before. But we also need to comprehend how and why humans evolved in the first place. A very special evolutionary trigger created our earliest human ancestors. This event at our very origins has shaped our contemporary world and our future in surprisingly pervasive ways. Our new book, Death from a Distance and the Birth of a Humane Universe, shares dramatic new insight into this event and all its myriad consequences for our origins, our history, and even our lives today. New knowledge will show us how we can collaborate to create a more humane and productive future. The process that made our ancient ancestors human 1.8 million years ago also holds the key to understanding all the problems we face today and the secrets to building on our successes in the contemporary world. Armed with this new interpretation of human evolution, we can understand why we have sometimes been deeply compassionate and cooperative and at other times brutally petty, abusive, and selfish. We can also understand the sources of the social and moral guidelines which govern our cooperation today. Why human babies love to learn from anyone who takes the time to teach them, why our sexual desires and behaviors are sometimes complex and ambivalent, why our ethical beliefs and moral values make us care if a mother kills her own children, or if someone on another continent exploits a child we've never ever met. Finally, we will understand why humans sometimes assemble into large groups and collaborate to achieve enormous common and humane goals. A real understanding of our ancient evolutionary origin gives us important insights into our history, both its triumphs and its ho most horrible outrages. Likewise, we can look at our contemporary political, economic, and ethical problems with new eyes. We can understand how and why our institutions are sometimes so successful, and yet at other times so dysfunctional and exploitative as to make our lives stressful and frustrating. To take charge of our common future, we must understand a huge difference in ability and behavior. Humans leave footprints on the moon, while the pinnacle of chimp technology is simply termite fishing with a stick. We need to know how we evolved to become a completely new kind of organism, a kind of super animal. We will discover that everything human about us arises from our individual ability to require cooperation, to insist on a humane universe. Our ancient ancestors first acquired the ability to insist on cooperation when they evolved the uniquely human ability to throw with elite skill. Our ability to throw is just as sophisticated as a dolphin's ability to swim or a cheetah's skill at running. Law enforcement, insistence on cooperation, becomes realistic for individuals who can project death from a distance in this way. This ability to project threat remotely remains crucial to our contemporary social cooperation, just as it was two million years ago, and as it will be two million years in the future. Only the tools of social coercion change. We speak with spectacular speed and fluency. This is not a cause of our uniqueness, it is an effect. Our human speech evolved because we can insist that the information we exchange is reliable and valuable. And as a consequence, our large, powerful human minds evolved to make use of this massive new stream of socially transmitted information. We have continued to build this stream with written language, and even today, through the recent creation of the Internet. Our human ethical psychology evolved to guide us as we manage and participate in this ancient cooperative human biology. We all look at the world in terms of good and evil. Moral outrage against those who have injured people we care about drives our coercion. Guilt prevents us from becoming targets of coercion by others. The scale of our social cooperation determines the extent of our human power over the world, including solving some of our most important contemporary problems. For example, a village of 300, my farm a few fields, 
a nation of 300 million, can sequence the human genome or build a transcontinental interstate highway system. Just imagine what a democratic global cooperative enterprise of 6 billion people could ultimately accomplish. We do need a good theory of history and of the future. Our access to coercive means determines the scale of our social cooperation and thus our power to shape the world. Put differently, we cooperate under the protective umbrella of our coercive means. These simple statements are actually a powerful theory of history. New weapons produce new scales of social cooperation. For example, the bow produced the agricultural revolutions and gunpowder produced the economic miracle of the modern democratic state. All the other details of our history, new technologies like written language or new belief systems, for example, turn out to be effects of the central coercive process, not causes of historical change. Access to the tools of social coercion also determines the structure of our societies, hierarchical and male-dominated, or democratic and sexually equal. Hierarchical, elite-dominated states are brutal and poor, while democratic states can be rich and humane. We now have the insight to confidently say never again to the worst atrocities of our past. Finally, and most importantly, our strong theory of human evolution, properties, and history gives us useful new tools to take charge of our own personal lives and to build a far wealthier, more fulfilling society for all the world's children. Death from a distance and the birth of a humane universe shares the vital new insights we need. Reading this book will change forever the way you look at what it means to be human. The best days of the two million year old human adventure are yet to come. We have only just begun to fulfill the promise of our unique ancient biology. We have the real opportunity to rebuild the very universe itself, transforming it into a vast, humane society. <laughs>